Would you like to negotiate a higher salary after a job offer? You've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm going to show you how to negotiate a salary increase up to 40% after your job offer. Watch this video to the end to learn my framework for negotiating a higher salary. Hi, I'm Jo Randolph and I'm a branding consultant based in London and I'll help you become an expert and leader in the field you care about most. On this channel, I'll share everything you need to know about how to become a leader doing meaningful work so your career is something you love and supports the life you want. If you want to watch videos like this, come and join me and subscribe. Anyways, let's get right into it. The fact that you're watching this video tells me that you are thinking about negotiating. Whether it's because you've been given a job offer and you feel like you've been lowballed, or because you know that talking about money makes you nervous and you never know what to say when they ask you questions like, what's your expected salary? And you wish you knew how to say the right thing so that you could actually get compensated in a way that you feel proud and are happy with. Now, let's start with the first mistake that you want to avoid because really this is, if you don't, if you make this mistake, it will affect your entire negotiation. And that is the beliefs you have around yourself. If you believe that you can't negotiate, then you won't be able to negotiate. And if you believe that you aren't worth negotiating over, let's say for example, a company gives you a job offer and you don't feel good enough to really convince them that you are worth more, then you'll also have a really hard time negotiating. Negotiating is one of those things where in order for you to be successful at it, you have to be confident in your value. You have to be confident that what you are requesting is the right and fair number. If there's any part of you that doubts that you are worth the number that you're asking for, then it will show and it will make all your negotiations basically fall apart. Now, we don't have enough time to go into all the details for this today, but um, if you want to learn how to really ace your interviews, how to ace your job application process, then I invite you to sign up for my free Get The Job training. In this training, I share everything that you need to know to ace your interviews and really be in the best possible position to actually negotiate a salary increase. Click on the link below and that's how you can access this free training. But for now, I'll share my framework that I share with my clients on how to negotiate a salary increase. This is what I did to actually increase my salary by up to 40%. I think it was around 40%, wasn't it? 40%. Yeah, so it, this, this is so good. Okay, so my formula is what I call the SMART formula, the SMART negotiation formula. Now, my husband laughs at this because he thinks the acronym isn't necessarily like an accurate acronym, but this is how I remember it in my head. Okay, so the first letter is S, which is show them why they should hire you. A mistake a lot of people make when they're trying to negotiate is they say they want a number, but they don't necessarily convince the other person why you are worth hiring in the first place. So what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure from the first moment they interact with you, this is through your cover letter, your CV, your interviews, every interaction they have with you, you need to blow them away. Because if they feel as though they have found the perfect person, that you are the person that they've spent months or weeks or days looking for, and you are the one that they desperately need in their team, then you are in the perfect position to actually convince them why they should hire you and why you're worth the number that you're asking for. The next letter is M, which, is, which stands for make a case. Now with this one, I want you to imagine that you are a lawyer, a kick butt lawyer. Have you ever seen the show Suits or The Good Wife? The lawyers there are awesome and you kind of want to be a lawyer that's kind of representing yourself, except you're not a lawyer. Instead, what you're doing is you're making a really strong case for why you should be paid the number that you want to be paid. Now, the easiest way to do this is to really think about a couple of things. One is you want to think about what's what do people at your level in your field get paid? If you understand the range, the low number and the high number, and you wanna make sure that your number is within that, then you can, you've actually got a really good case for saying why you should be paid a certain amount, particularly if the number they're offering you is below the market value. What you also wanna do is you wanna make a case according to your position. So what is it that they're asking you to do? If you can get hold of numbers that you need to you know, like targets that you need to hit, 
things that they're asking you to do, if you get really clear on why that costs additional money, then you actually have a stronger case for why they should pay you more. So I'll give you an example. A few years ago when I was working and I was interviewing for a job, I got offered a job at my dream company and I was so excited. But then I remember getting my email that had the offer letter with my number and I thought, no, this can't be right because basically what they had done is they had offered me a job at the exact same salary at my previous job. And it was partly my fault because when they told me, what are your salary expectations? I didn't have an answer for that. So I just told them what I was earning and they of course ended up offering me the role at what I was earning. And it made no sense, like logically. I can understand why they did it because obviously they want to get a bargain, but I also knew that for the job they wanted me to do, for the ambitious targets that I had to hit, they would need someone that was, you know, up for the job. And to do that job, you actually need a higher caliber of talent. And that position was actually very different to the position that I was doing before. So it made no sense why you would pay the same for two completely different roles that require different skill sets and different targets that need to be hit. I said this to them and they actually responded back to me within I think 24 or 48 hours with a new offer where they had actually increased my salary by 40% and it was a huge jump. I mean, do you remember that? It was a massive jump. It was, we're like, wow. We're like, wow, okay. So you really want to get clear on what the market rate is and you also really want to get clear on the value that you'll be given the company because if you're helping a company to make a lot more money, then it actually makes sense to give you the number that you're looking for. Now, the third thing is that you want to ask for what you want. So get really clear on what it is that you actually want. Is it really about more money or do you want more work-life balance? Like what is it in particular that you want? But the point is, is that you really have got to get clear on asking for more than just your salary. Because if you only ask for your salary, then you're kind of missing the other benefits that you can get. So there's some people that are able to negotiate and get equity. They're able to get, you know, work from home once a week. They're able to get training. They're able to get other benefits that are actually more aligned with what they really need in their career right now. The fourth thing you want to do is R, which stands for research what they want. So the, the truth is, is that a good deal isn't about you getting everything you want. It would be amazing if we could be like children and we could just ask for whatever we want and our parents would give it to us. But you know, sadly, it's not like that. And that's really not what makes a good deal. What makes a good deal is when two, the two parties, so you and the company get what you both want and you are both very happy parties. If one of you gets what you want and the other person is unhappy, then you kind of leave with a, you know, a bad taste in your mouth. And if you get what you want and they're unhappy, then they feel as though maybe you're not worth what they paid you. And then when you start the job, it ends up being this awkward context where they feel as though you've over oversold yourself and you're not delivering what they want. Now, the easiest way to make sure that you get a good deal done is to figure out what it is that they want, understand what their challenges are, what their business problems are. If you can help them solve a really fundamental business problem that is stopping them from hitting their revenue goals, then I guarantee you, you will be able to actually make a bigger impact in the organization and you can try and see how you can help them and that will justify why you're worth the money that you're asking for. And then last but not least is T, which is tell the truth. Always be honest, always, you know, never lie, never manipulate, never try to be something you're not, but always tell the truth about what the situation is, what you want, what you need, and how you want to help them. And make sure that when you're asking for the offer, you tell them everything all in one go so that the person believes that if they give you as much as possible of that you've requested, that you're more likely to say yes. If, however, you seem like you're not necessarily being honest and you say, hey, I want a pay increase. And they say, okay, we can do that. And then you come back to them and you say, oh, I actually want to work from home as well. And they're like, well, you didn't mention that before. So they go back and they say, oh yeah, also, do you have any bonuses? I'd love to have some bonuses. And all that back and forth makes them feel like, okay, this person doesn't really care about the job. They just want to get the most 
um, the most that they can get. And that leaves them feeling very icky. So tell them the truth. When they ask you about what your expectations are, straight up, tell them the truth, tell them what you want all in one go so they know exactly what to expect from you. These are really like the key things that you need to take away. But of course, if you wanna learn more about how to get the job you want and you wanna increase your salary, then I totally recommend that you get my free Get The Job training. It's a free five day training with videos, audio recordings, and other information and worksheets that you can use to essentially ace the interviews and negotiate a high salary. Now, to grab that free video training, then just click on the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to know, what have you found most difficult about negotiating? I'd really, really love to know. Maybe I'll create a specific video around that particular thing that you mentioned. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. It was great talking to you and I'll see you next week. All right, bye. Now my husband laughs at this because he thinks the acronym isn't necessarily like an accurate acronym, but this is how I remember it in my head. Okay, so the, the first letter is M, which is, yeah. So the first letter is S. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went ahead of myself there. I was already at M. Okay. <laughs>